Hello and welcome to another detailed weather forecast for August 23rd, 2021. My name is Nate, and now since Tropical Cyclone Henri has made landfall in the Northeast, things have gotten pretty quiet in the Atlantic. So today we will discuss when will the Atlantic have its next big tropical system and whether or not that could become a hurricane. But before we get started, please be sure to do me a favor, hit that like button down below to get this information out to as many people as possible. Subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information that I will be providing for you, as well as follow me on my social media in the description down below. Looking at the wide imagery of the Atlantic Basin, you can see the remnants of Henri up here in New England, causing a lot of severe weather across portions outside of the East Coast, basically right off of the coast. But other than that, we don't really have too much activity, besides that we do have a little bit of a tropical wave over here next to Africa, right off of the Cape Verde Islands. The only issue with that, though, is that you can see a little bit of tint in this air mass right next to it, a little bit of a brown right next to it, and that actually shows that there is a lot of Saharan dust that's shooting right into the system, so it's giving it a very low chance of formation over the next five days. But definitely something that we're going to have to continue to monitor, as some models do indicate that that could potentially form a little bit later. Looking at the water vapor imagery, this tells us a much wider view and a uh, much easier view, uh, view to tell as to what is exactly happening from a, uh, from a discrete perspective. So a couple things here to note. Here is Henri. Here is another low pressure system because you can see it moving counterclockwise similar to this. You also have another weak low pressure system right here with a little bit of dry air indicated in much of this gray or even dark gray. And uh, whenever you do see that, that indicates that there is a lot of dry air within that general vicinity. You also have a lot of dry air right here. And uh, that's also where this tropical wave down here that's going to be potentially trying to form into a potential tropical depression or tropical storm later on. It's going to be moving into that dry air and it's going to make it even less favorable as it continues to move about. You also have another tropical wave over here that is coming right off of Africa, but then you also have a ridge right here. You can see the winds moving just kind of clockwise in this instance, and that's a high pressure system that's sitting right north of where all of these tropical waves are going. And this will basically steer most of these storms, kind of curling it off a bit more from a westerly direction to a northwesterly direction. And so uh, definitely something to watch out for in that regard. And then we also have this tropical wave right here that's right over the, the Lesser Antilles. And so we're really going to have to watch out and see if that ends up developing into a tropical system a bit later on. If we take a look at the five-day graphical tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center, you can see that there is two areas of interest here, one of which being that tropical wave that was near the Lesser Antilles and another being that tropical wave that was right next to the Cabo Verde Islands. And so... The big thing here is that you notice how all of these are yellow, and that actually indicates a below 40% chance of formation over the next five days. Of course, if they were orange, they would have a 40 to 60% chance of formation over the next five days, and then the red being higher than 60%. So not a whole lot of confidence installed with most of these waves just yet, but both of which are pretty interesting. This one that's heading off right to the central portions of the Atlantic right next to Bermuda has a 30% chance of formation over the next five days, and same with the one that's down towards Central America. Now, if we take a look at some of the ensemble guidance members, uh, we'll take a look at the ECNS first. And uh, the big thing here to note is that if you see any little L's around the actual map, for instance, some right here and some right here, that's the model indicating that there are some uh, instances for low pressure systems to start to form and really kind of kick up. And so if you do see that, that is a, uh, that's basically the model saying that this most likely will form into a tropical system. Although there, if you have more of them within the same area, it ha increases the likelihood within that general vicinity. Another thing to note too is that you're going to be seeing lines that move throughout the actual picture here. And those lines actually correlate with these colors up here. So if you ever see those colors of gray, light blue, dark blue, uh, light green, yellow, orange, into the reds and pinks, those actually correspond with the wind speed in knots. 
and the just know that the uh, knots is actually um, the uh, unit for knots is actually lower than uh, miles per hour. So for instance, uh, for a 40, uh, 40 knot storm, it would actually be a 45 mile per hour storm. So if that makes any sense to anyone, uh, it's just that it, the knots actually the knots units uh, less knots units equals more mile per hour units. So let's uh, move on through and see what happens here as this continues into the latter stages of this week. You can see that the remnants of Henri do seem to kind of kick up a little bit. And then you also see that tropical wave that starts to get active, uh, starts to get really active here. They, uh, this uh, ensemble member guidance here from the ECENS actually thinks that that most likely will start to form here relatively soon and continue to move about. And then as this continues to move on through into Tuesday and Wednesday, you can see that most of the model uh, model ensemble members start to think that this is most likely going to start to dissipate more and more as it continues to fur uh, move further north. And it's all about that ridge right here that's kind of guiding the system and turning it a bit further towards the north and west rather than moving it westward. And so if you remember correctly as to how there was so much dry air over here, it's encountering that dry air and is actually weakening it a lot more significantly. As this continues to move about, nothing all too much here until we start to get from Thursday into Friday to where we not only have a couple ensemble members off of the coast of Africa that start to really shoot up, but we also have a couple ensemble members over here near Central America, south of the Greater Antilles. And uh, this is going to be something to potentially watch out for, as this will most likely have the potential of producing another tropical system here in the Atlantic. And as this continues to move further and further into view, we actually have a couple more ensemble members within the same general area, right around here near Honduras and Belize. And this is going to continue to uh, basically show up on this model run for quite some time. We also have another ensemble group here indicating that there will be another area of low pressure systems that will begin to form most likely will be tropical in this instance and then we also have another one right here off the coast of africa that's uh, really starting to basically congeal as this continues to move on through into the weekend and even into the beginning of next week here is sunday into monday and you can see the uncertainty in regards to where that tropical system actually moves most of which will actually move over the Yucatan Peninsula, but how that thing propagates further into the Atlantic uh, and further into the Gulf of Mexico is the big question here. We have some model members indicating that some could move off towards Louisiana and Texas. We have some that indicate it'll move further and further towards the landfall of Hurricane Grace near Tampico. And then we also have a couple model members that do think it'll be uh, actually moving a bit further inland uh, from the Yucatan Peninsula or even dying out. And so whether or not this can cross the Yucatan Peninsula back into the Gulf of Mexico will be the big concern here. And if it does end up moving towards Texas and Louisiana, it will have an extra period of time to be over water and potentially be uh, a strong tropical storm to maybe even a hurricane in this instance. And uh, most model members in this case do agree that uh, this... Uh, this storm will most likely intensify upon its approach on landfall if that does take that route uh, further up towards the north. As this continues to move on through, you can see how uh, the plot is starting to get really congealed with the amount of uh, lines here. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to try and interpret as to what is exactly going to be happening. But I'll try my best to kind of describe as to what happens next. Uh, most of the stuff that occurs in the central Atlantic does move off to the north and stays relatively far over water. And then you also have a couple ensemble members, as you can see, from Africa that really get its act together. Look at this right here. There are so many L's here within this general vicinity. I, uh, I'm afraid I cannot count it. And so uh, this time period from next week at the beginning of September, uh, it's going to basically get really active here. And it'll start to translate uh, with a lot of activity as it continues to propagate further westward. And uh, as the big thing here is that where will this end up going? Will this continue to head a bit further to the south and head through the Caribbean? Will it stay here and 
uh, basically parallel along the lesser and greater Antilles, or will it stay over water and basically kind of curl out like that? It's all it all would have to depend upon what exactly is going to be happening here, uh, according to this model run. Now we're gonna we're gonna take a look at another model run here because it's always good to get more opinions in this instance. And uh, the, the exact same thing is shown here for the most part. You have that tropical wave right here next to the Cabo Verde Islands. And you also have another tropical wave that is uh, that is expected off of Africa, as well as a couple of uh, minor activity over here in Central America. As we play this along here, uh, this is the beginning of this week into the end of this week. A lot of the model members here, according to the GEFS, which is the model run that we are actually using, they actually think that this most likely will form here uh, from that tropical wave as it moves into that dry air uh, pocket that we were talking about earlier. But then it ends up weakening rather significantly uh, on its approach through, and we lose a lot of ensemble members. Notice how most end up stopping here, and you do have a couple that end up continue to move a little bit further off to the west. You also have another area of interest with that tropical wave down over here. We also have... That high pressure, as I was talking about, just so north of that. And that high pressure is basically going to steer a lot of the tropical systems to the south of it. You're going to have a lot of shear that's basically either pushing it down south or it's going to push it a bit further towards the side of it and basically try and parallel it, uh, almost even rotate it around its side. But in this instance, this tropical wave ends up going a bit further to the south and it will most likely have... A southern approach if it does continue to meander through in portions of the uh, Atlantic. As this continues to move about here, uh, you can see those ensemble members that really start to kind of weaken a little bit, but then you also see near Central America on the Atlantic side, a lot of ensemble members really getting its act together, and we have a giant consensus that there most likely will be a tropical system here that begins to form as it continues to move about. And then uh, as, we, as we play it further along, uh, this is Friday into Saturday here, and we have a lot of the mo model members thinking that it will hit on the southern side of the Yucatan near Belize, and uh, it will most likely stay on the southern side of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, however, I do want to point to the fact that there is a couple model ensemble members over here, bit of outliers, but we love to uh, take into account all different possibilities. The... Model run here from this tropical wave, a lot of which took it towards the central portions of the Atlantic. But there was one that ended up actually going a bit further inland, uh, heading off towards the United States. And then there was also another model member over here that formed right next to Cuba. And uh, we'll talk about that in a bit with the GFS model. But uh, just something to point out that there is the potential for maybe another tropical system uh, sometime around Saturday or Friday into Saturday. If it's not this, then it could be this, and then it could even be some of these outliers as well. And then as this continues to propagate further and further, you can see how most of the model uh, uh, model members take this on the southern side of the Bay of Campeche, and it's going to most likely stay there for quite some time. Although there are a couple model ensemble members that say right along the border of Texas to maybe even a landfall in Louisiana is possible. And uh, it's definitely something that we're going to have to continue to watch out for as time continues to progress. And then if we continue to move on through with the models, you can see that there is a lot of activity now within the uh, main development region, which is just this area right about here. That's uh, if I ever say MDR or main development region in the future, that's the area that I'm going to be talking about. And uh, this is uh, really a lot of activity here, even for this model. And you can see that there is a lot of ensemble members that really start to kind of pop out here and show a lot of different tropical systems. You also have um, some still in the Gulf of Mexico. One thing that I do want to point out here is that there is a couple ensemble members that say uh, those uh, that the storm from earlier that actually uh, went through the Yucatan Peninsula into the Bay of Campeche will have some residual effects and have some residual showers and thunderstorms and more of which will be able to form into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially even become a tropical system there. And the time frame of which I'm talking about here is sometime within mid next week. Mid next week will most likely be the determining factor and we'll probably have our answer by mid this week 
most likely into the latter stages of this week uh, for when our next official tropical system would be. As this continues to progress further and further, uh, you can see that it becomes really messy here. It's kind of hard to really keep up more or less, uh, but we do have a lot of activity there in the Gulf. You have a lot of activity over near the eastern seaboard that starts to pop up. And then you also have some scattered activity here within the main development region as this continues to move on through. And then uh, this becomes the end of the model run right here. So last thing we want to talk about here is the cyclonic vorticity here from the GFS model. Uh, we're looking at the 500 millibar geopotential height as well as the wind shear indicated in the wind barbs. And a couple things that we can indicate here is here is the ridge that I was talking about indicated with this clockwise motion with the wind barbs. You have another ridge that's located right over Bermuda. That is your Bermuda high. And then you also have a couple low pressure systems to talk about. Here's a massive low pressure system that's just south of Greenland. You have another low pressure system that is, of course, near Canada. And then there is the remnants of Henri. Here's your also down here. There's your tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center was talking about. And uh, you also have another activity over here, another decent activity of vorticity uh, right just to the north of that and south to the uh, south of the Bermuda High right here. So as this continues to plays about, uh, the winds will basically stay the same with the high pressure systems. It'll basically keep it within that general vicinity. But then this area right here that we were talking about right next to the uh, tropical wave ends up kind of consolidating a little bit and a little bit uh, not exactly an outlier more or less to watch out for is that if this thing can and uh, if this thing well i should say if this thing does end up materializing a little bit better this could be a sleeper in a tropical system uh, maybe a weak tropical system that could form and move on through here uh, in the early stages of this week into the mid stages of this week and then that tropical wave as i mentioned will continue to move off to the north gfs takes it as a, a relatively weak storm for the most part especially with all that dry air that moves on through you can also see the ridge here the uh, the giant ridge the high pressure system the bermuda high more or less that continues to sit right over bermuda and even the carolinas and so most of the approach here would be it's very unfavorable to form over here very favorable to form here and that's the reason why the window of opportunity is pretty open right now uh, for these tropical systems to move on through so uh, now since we're on thursday into friday you can start to see that there's a lot of vorticity that really starts to spike here in areas of the caribbean and uh, this will really kind of consolidate a bit more into a tropical system as the gfs points out this will eventually move on through and according to this model run it actually takes it a bit further north, but still a little bit too far south of the border of the U.S. and Mexico. Another thing to uh, watch out here, too, is that this low pressure system right here that moves off about creates a huge trough that uh, basically tears up this ridge for the most part. So this ridge ends up not being as strong as it once was, the uh, Bermuda High, but you still have this high pressure over here in Africa that's going to continue to steer most tropical systems south of it, and it will most likely have a approach near the uh, Lesser Antilles uh, moving on forward. So as this continues to play out more and more, we have more vorticity over here in the Caribbean by the early to mid stages of next week sometime within the end of august into the beginning of september and then as this continues to propagate further and further a potential another tropical system could form here and move off into the gulf of mexico and uh, this could potentially be another one here potentially even a strong tropical system as well as according to this model run makes landfall somewhere near houston and lake charles so definitely something to watch out for but the time period seems to be more or less uh, if it's not this weekend, it's going to be sometime in the mid to late stages of next week as to when we could potentially be seeing our next big tropical system. That's going to be it for me, guys. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media. And then if you want the best information, please go to your local weather forecasting offices, the National Hurricane Center and the Storm Prediction Center. That's going to be it for me. Stay safe, everyone, and peace out.